I'll go in order. I'm just gonna drink like three coffees and I'll just do this really fast. We'll do a live. Or go, right? Okay. I used to I used to be short this thing. I was short this many years ago, like 10 years ago, because it was like a fake 3D printing company. And I wonder what they're doing now, probably still being a fake 3D printing company. Best method to improve productivity? I would say Red Bull. You have to really want it, right? You have to, in your heart of hearts, believe you're gonna do it and you're gonna win and you're gonna focus and that the path that you're taking is gonna be successful. If you don't have that kind of approach, if you really aren't sure if your path or your, what you're doing is gonna be successful, doubt will creep in, that doubt will kill you. And you'll begin to do other things with your time instead of focus and be productive. You know what's gonna make you successful. You, you, oftentimes we're just scared of it. We know if you read that linear algebra textbook that you can get an AI job that makes you half a million a year. You know every employee at OpenAI who's been there, you know, excluding maybe the last year is worth like 50 to 100 million or more. Every single person there, just to work there, you're worth 100 mil. Think about that. What do they do that you can't do? I think so much of success is about believing in yourself and charting a map. Nobody's successful overnight, but you chart a course like Magellan. You chart a course for the future and you say, this is what my next five years is gonna look like. If I stay on this course, I'm gonna meet all my goals. But it's easier said than done. It's much easier said than done. You have to believe that your course will get you there. If your course is to land on the moon or something, some crazy thing that's not gonna happen, you're not gonna believe it and you're not gonna do it. You can't say my, my goal is to be a billionaire in two years. Now maybe I could do that, but that's another story. Holy moly, this is a real company now? How'd this become a real company? Is this the same organogenesis from years ago? Looks like they pivoted? Regenerative medicine company, such a fake, fake idea. Regenerative medicine. Man, it's a wound care company. Wounds regenerate themselves, that's... Yeah, I think Brian Johnson is, uh, well, you don't know what I wanna think. You don't know what I think. You, you don't wanna know what I think. I think that I like, I'll put it this way. I like old fashioned medicine. It was very old fashioned. I was brought up in a very conservative idea of what medicine looks like. I'm not saying anything bad about him. I'm just saying it's hard for me to think outside the box. That's a limit that I have. I look at almost all new things with a layer of suspicion and cynicism. And that's not good. It makes me miss a lot of big things. I missed Moderna and BioNTech and the whole mRNA revolution, which so far has produced one product. But regardless, I missed that whole revolution because I was very close minded to the idea of mRNA. And I was wrong. Uh, and I have many other examples. So far, one product, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was a scam or not. It was just vaccines can, can be a little tricky because you're dealing with public health as well as clinical trial, clinical setting. Yeah, I was looking at Alnylam the other day, actually. Alnylam's still up huge. Alnylam's up 38% uh, this year. I don't think people who criticize vaccines or COVID understand what they're talking about most of the time. Recursion? Oh yeah, maybe we should look at the recursion news. Oh, rec oh recursion is, uh, yeah, it looks a little sus. Recursion's a weird one. Okay, so this is a living cell therapy. That's oh, from cytokines and growth factors. Okay, I'm just gonna copy pasta that into the model. And this is for what diabetic foot ulcers and what's a VLU? Some kind of ulcer, leg ulcer? Yeah, it's gotta be a leg ulcer. Venous leg ulcer. I mean, the wound care world is like this like little part of the med tech industry. It's not a growing space. It's like this really kind of cruddy industry because like you're dealing with all these kinds of products which are like just different grafts and different, <clears throat> like this one, Dermagraft, different scaffolds and somebody comes in, their legs half amputated and you're trying to save it. It's like just kind of a very odd little business, but it's a business. And if it's a business, we can value it. And if we can value it, we can buy it and sell it, right? So I'm sometimes 
when I'm looking at like PE type deals, I feel like I'm a, an auctioneer. It's like, okay, bring it on, put it on the table. I'll give you a price. What do you got for me today? Yeah, these ulcers are pretty gnarly. You don't want to see these. If I showed them on YouTube, you'd <clears throat> probably get a, probably wouldn't like to see them, let's just put it that way. Some of you freaks might. But look at the margins are really high. This is like pharma gross margins. But then you have the grift of the graft. You, you have all this selling expense because you got to go hospital to hospital kind of quote unquote convincing these doctors to use the product. You know, in, in orthopedics, there's a lot of there's a lot of chicanery going on, or payments and different all kinds of not good stuff. Sometimes lands people in the big house. You go to the big house. You better learn rap music. You better study up. I'm talking about a boogie, NBA young boy. You got into the classics. And the classic classic. All right, so this is a unique company. Uh, I went into this thinking there was an old organogenesis that did 3D printing. Like organ 3D printing was their thing. That's why they were called organogenesis. And I, I wonder if I even got the wrong stock or this was just so long ago. Like 2010 type stuff. I don't really do Spotify. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a break from music. You know, I love the hotelier. That's my, my boy. That's like my main band. They don't, they're not putting out music right now and Thursday and stuff like that. I was listening to Coheed and Cambria the other day. That's another local band. So of course I like local music and I support local music, but. Okay, so the organogenesis I'm thinking of either went away or disappeared or I don't know what happened. Oh, okay, this is a SPAC. This was a SPAC? Let me, let me just try good old fashioned Google. Organogenesis, 3D printing, organ, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of Organovo. Organogenesis is somebody different. Organovo is the one I'm thinking of. It's still around, that's great. 10 million market cap. This was a, yeah, I was shorted way back here around this hype. I think it's reverse split a bunch of times. So even at peak, that was, uh, let's see. Well, you can back into what the market cap would have been, right? 10 mil times 10 would be uh, 100 mil. So that would be at six and 60 would be a billion. I don't think it ever got to a billion though. Maybe it did. I think maybe it did. I have to ask my old partner. But yeah, I think we short started, when do we start shorting this thing? It had to be in this, I think we shorted it for this thing. I have to go look at some of the old records. No, we haven't abandoned Gupta. Actually, I um, I was working on something related to it last night. Um, IBM put out, of all companies, IBM <laughs> put out an interesting uh, library that is gonna be really helpful for us. I think the one of the biggest challenges in AI software is, is writing evals. So evals are tricky because you need to be either subject matter expert or like find some independent way to like get really good evals. Yeah, all the models will go on GitHub. Don't worry. I can't I can't get pushed right now. I'm gonna focus on this. All right, so this is a completely different company from what I was thinking of, which is good. I thought I said we were gonna go really fast, but I. I always get a, go on some like tangent. Sorry, guys. All right, so it's like this very slow grower. Ah, it's not that slow. We need a little more data to tell, I guess. One quarter grew slowly, one quarter grew quickly. So maybe it's like moderate growth. Thank you for putting this on my radar, by the way. Small cap med tech can be like really profitable. It has the upside of biopharma without the downside. And I'm actually not banned from medtech. I'm not really banned from pharma either, but that's another story. I'll talk about that more someday. I'm gonna go to the judge with a straight up cure. And be like, up to you judge. You let the people die or you unban Shkreli. And put those lives on your head now. You tell them kids they're gonna die. Go ahead. 
I'm gonna bring in the kid in the wheelchair. And she's gonna be like, no, Mr. Shkreli. <laughs> Little Johnny's crying like, oh my, I love Farber, bro. Sorry, Johnny. He wants to make too much money. Your life isn't worth it. It's just not worth it. I don't care if he's a brilliant chemist, and biologist, and businessman. I hope you have a good funeral, little Johnny. Case dismissed. Okay, so super interesting company. One of the problems with every med tech company is you don't really understand if you could rationalize the cost structure, which basically means cut costs. And let's say if Medtronic bought these guys, and I think Medtronic has their own competing products, but for argument's sake, if Medtronic or some PE company or whatever bought the company, what would the real cash flow be for that company? Well, that's sometimes hard to tell. So these guys were a SPAC. It is, I gotta say, it's really high margin, gross margin. I did not expect that. Kinda seems attractive. I mean, it, it's really like a totally weird competitive business of just like, making these weird scaffolds and wound care products. This is the interesting part. Here's the cash flow from operations over time. Oh, wow. And there's the capex. All right. It's pretty inconsistent stuff. So cash flow from operations, 61, 9, 7, 8. 24859 and 3917. But the CapEx, that was exciting, but then the CapEx kind of kills it. All right, so if you take the average year, they have 9 million in free cash flow. Hardly attractive. So unless they have like some new product or something. Yeah, I don't like this one. 